It's a Locked On crossover. Jonathan Davis from Locked On Longhorns. Cameron Stewart from Locked On Baylor, Texas. Baylor, the Battle of I-35 this Saturday. Cameron is newer to the network. He's only been here for about a month, but Baylor fans know who he is. Longhorn fans, you will get to know him. And I'm going on my second year, you know, being crazy, talking about sports on this yes. network. Cameron, I'm excited for the game. But before we get to the game, we got to preview it, hype it up. And I want to ask you yeah. how the fans – in Waco and Baylor fans are feeling right because you look at the schedule and you see you have Texas State that should be a win right and you see you have should, Utah yeah. without Cam Rising that could be a win right yeah and then you see Long Island that should could and was a win right so I think a lot of Baylor fans expected the team to be two and one some Baylor fans expected the team to be three and oh I don't think any Baylor fan expected the team to be one and two and sitting how they are sitting currently what are the vibes like in Waco right now Vibes are low. Vibes are low, Jonathan. I, I can't lie to you, uh, but they're ready to burst in a good way. Uh, I think you're right. I mean, nobody was expecting one and two. I think there was a good bit of the fan base that was already looking at this game in July. You know, not that the Utah game didn't have the pizzazz, but obviously this one, this this has the the, the fiber of a, of a real big game. And so a lot of our fans were looking at it saying, man, if you're three and oh, College game day is going to be like if we're three and oh, and UT wins at Bama, I know it's a long shot, but college game day will be there. We'll both be in the top 20 at least. Like, this is going to be such a huge deal. It's our last time here. Um, so that was the thoughts, those that was the thought process for a while. And now it's like, you know, biggest Baptist school in the world. We're all on our hands and knees saying, Lord, please keep it under 30, please. Uh, it has not been vibes have not been great. Now, that said. I said that it's ready to burst. There's some momentum, and it's coming out of rebellion, so to speak. A um, few different reasons. Uh, Baylor has not opted to not honor the 2013 Big 12 championship team, which beat UT on the final day uh, because it's an Art Riles team, is I'm guessing what we're going with, but they have chose not to honor them on the 10th anniversary. And there's just been a lot of disconnect between – the administration and the fan base, mainly at like game day atmospheres. So it's not been great at McLean, um, even though it used to be, you know, it's not 100,000 seat stadium, but we used to have great atmospheres there. Not so much the case anymore. And now there is a, a fan led blackout going on. And we'll see how that goes. I don't think it's going to be, you know, blanketing the whole stadium. I don't think it's going to look terrific, but they are ready to get behind something, is what I'm trying to say. They are ready to come together and put together a good atmosphere, and maybe, just maybe, pull a miracle. Okay, he said vibes are high. I know, I saw that they're doing the blackout. My sister nothing. goes to Baylor, so uh should be exciting uh this Saturday when Texas rolls into town. The vibes have taken a couple hits. They are getting high. <laughs> We're getting there. Okay, okay. Sounds good. So, as far as the vibes around Longhorn Nation, right, we are 3-0. Yes, and oh. We are the number three yeah. team in the country. And I will say when you beat Bama, right, that was definitely the biggest, you know, win for the program in over a decade. Uh, you start to feel really good about yourself, right? And then, you know, you beat up on Rice and you beat up on Wyoming. You know, there were some inconsistent performances. And maybe, you know, the, the beat down came a little later than you thought it would. But nonetheless, you took yeah. care of business and, you know, it won happened. both of those games by 20-plus points. I think now there's like a certain level – of anxiety amongst Longhorn Nation that we're not used to, right? Because now you've always been the hunted, but now you control your own destiny to get to the college yeah. football playoff. You're the number three team in the country. You would assume if you win out or, you know, suffer a good loss, right? If there's such yeah. a thing as a good loss, right? See if you love the good still, loss. Yeah. Right? Then you can still find your way into the college football playoff. But it's like week in and week out. It's like, okay, is, is the team going to show up today, right? Are they going to play to the level that they played against Alabama, right? Are they going to, yeah. you know play on the road like they play in DKR, right? Are they going to step up to the plate and win this game? Or is this going to be, you know, the week that same old Texas shows up, right? So there's just a lot of, like, new anxiety. It's a new feeling around yeah. Longhorn Nation now because it finally feels like the team is on the right track. It finally feels like Texas is doing what Texas is supposed to do. But now you got to go out there and defend that week in and week out. And, and like I said, it just it just adds some butterflies in your stomach every Saturday yeah, when you're watching man. football now because you literally can't afford to lose. It's that anxiety because of expectation. 
in a way, it's something y'all have wanted for years now, and now it's here. And now it's and we here. can't it's handle like, it, right? Uh, we can't handle it's, it. It's weird. I was talking with Corey Mose about this yesterday. He just said the vibes are weird, kind of what you just said. It's 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 an anxiety. It's like like after that Bama game, it's like okay, now we're here. Um, all right, this is what we're <laughs> supposed to be. We're supposed to be leading the back. Now we now we just got to do it. Now you just overthink every game. Um, and so I, I'm more wondering. You know, obviously Alabama on the road, big game, but now you go into Big 12 play. And I asked Corey something like this, but it's now the Big 12 farewell tour. Okay. And there's no love lost anywhere y'all go this year. I mean, y'all are used to that. That's a that's a good yeah. thing. But is that is that add to the anxiety a little bit of like, hey, you know, people love beating us, but now we're really everyone's Super Bowl and it's everyone's last shot at that is there like a an anxiety of are is this coach ready for this is this quarterback ready for this are are all these guys ready for this yeah you know i can't speak for the team and how they're feeling i hope they're feeling good and you know feeling stress-free but amongst the fans i think so right you know um especially because there's such a separation right now i feel like between texas oklahoma and the rest of the big 12 and the rest of the big 12 fan bases and You know, you want to get out of here on a high note, right? You don't want anybody in the Big 12 to be able to say, yeah, their last year we got them, right? Like the last time we played Baylor, the last time we played Texas Tech, the last time we played, uh, you know, Houston, BYU, whatever, right? We Just ask A&M how they feel about that. You know what I mean? (laughs) Exactly, right? And (laughs) when you – exactly, right? We've been talking about beating A&M for the last time for over a decade. And, you know, social media plays a huge part in it, right? These fan bases are on Twitter – or X, you know, all day, yeah. every day, going back and forth at each other, right? And so it's like, if we lose to Baylor, then Baylor fans are going to have bragging rights over us for, for however many years, TCU, whatever. So, you know, I can't speak for the team, but I do think amongst the fan base, it adds some anxiety because it's like, we don't want to give this fan base props. We don't want to give this fan base credit. We don't want to yes. give this fan base bragging rights over us. We want to stop everybody out on the way out of the Big 12, headed to the SEC, and hopefully we can do it. But like I said, there's anxiety you know, keeping up with that week by week. Yeah. Just these games that you feel like you can't lose as a fan. Yeah. Cause that's yeah. how I felt about this game. Cause I am, I am a hater. I, I said that on yesterday's <laughs> show. I'm not afraid to say it. I am not yeah. in the minority here. Uh, I am a, yeah. I am a UT hater. It's not the only school yeah. I'm a hater for, but definitely. And so it, we, it was like that just overarching, like keeping you up at night. Like we have to win this game. I don't necessarily have yeah. it now because I have zero expectation to win the yeah. game. And I'm just kind of not trying to think about it too much and resigning myself to that fact. But when yeah. we were thinking about like college game day, three and zero going to this game, it was like, can't lose this one. Cannot lose this one. Yeah. Especially after starting one and two. Sad. Right. <laughs> but, yeah. but let's get to the, to the, <laughs> to the football on the field aspect. Right. Because I think the quarterback situation for Baylor is really interesting. Right. I think for both schools, it. actually, yeah. you know, um, you had Blake Shapin coming into year two and a lot of people felt like there would be some improvement. And, you know, he threw 38 passes, completed 31 of them, looked really good early in the season and unfortunately dealt with injury. And now you got Sawyer Robertson, who's come yeah. in with one touchdown and three interceptions. And he's giving you some good. He's giving you some bad. So tell Longhorn fans what they should expect from Sawyer Robertson. And from the Baylor side, is there a ton of confidence that he can pull off the upset on Saturday? Well, I know from a fan standpoint, there's not a ton of confidence. Um, and from, from the coaches, I mean, they're saying the right things. They're they're showing some belief in him. But there was a moment in last week's game against Long Island, which on the scoreboard looks like a comfortable 30-7. to 7, You know, nothing to write home about. Vibes weren't great. They were okay. Um, but in the second quarter, he just came out for a series, Robertson. And he had gotten a little nicked up in the week before, but so we just thought that's what it was. And then after the game, Dave Aranda says, oh, no, we put R.J. Martinez out there, a third-string quarterback um, who's a veteran guy. He played at Northern Arizona four years, um, so he's got some experience. And And he says, we, we did that for a spark. We needed a spark in our offense against Long Island, and Sawyer only completes 10 to 22 passes for the game. So it's a little bit of a of a red flag. I got to say, it's a little bit of a red flag. And I've said this time and time again, I've become kind of a Sawyer defender here. I almost feel for the kid. I mean, I I don't like feel terrible. He's, you know, a major college football player. But I do feel for the kid in that 
he is adjusting to such a different system than he's ever been in. He has been a one read, get the ball out quick, vertical game, spread offense kind of guy. And he's not, that's not at all the offense he's playing here. And it's been obvious two of those three interceptions, at least maybe even the third of he just was not on the same page as the receivers. And that's what leads you to 10 of 22 against long Island. So I just, I just doubt that Baylor will have any success passing the ball. I hope I'm wrong and, and they've drawn something up and they've, found a weakness in this in this Longhorn defense, but they're going to rely heavy on the run attack, which is also a little beleaguered right now with Dom Richardson out um, and, and and dial up some some easy looks for the quarterback, kind of the way uh, Quinn had a little bit of last year. You know, Quinn had more talent, but uh, just dialing up some easy looks and trying to get him into a rhythm so he doesn't lose his confidence. I think that's what you'll probably see um, early on from Baylor to, to just keep him in the game, keep him quarterback and, and, and not lose that confidence because when he loses it, it, it goes way south. Yeah. I think if Baylor's going to win this game, it's going to take, you know, some heroic play late, keep it close, sure. you know, shorten the game and, you know, just try to score on the last drive. A quick word from our sponsors, you know, we'll get into a little bit more of the on field action between Texas and Baylor this Saturday. This crossover episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Snap into action this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the National Football League. All right, Cameron, I'm here at your service for Longhorn fans, for Baylor fans. Yes, what yes. do Baylor fans need to know about this Texas football team, the number three ranked team in the country currently, the best team in the Big 12? Well, I mean, I was going to save this, but the question that's burning on all of our minds, and I like to ask the Longhorn experts about this because I know what the rest of the country is going to think, but I only care about what you guys think. The dreaded words. Are y'all back? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. You know, I, I yes. think that you're talking about, you know, a blue blood program. Um, you're talking about a program with a ton of history, a, a program that has won national championships, a, a program that has played on the highest stage and won at the highest level. So uh, you can't get too excited about winning at Alabama. You can't get too excited about starting a season three. and oh hell, you definitely can't get too excited about beating Alabama when they can barely beat South Florida. Right. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think it's just business as usual. This is where Texas should expect to be. This is where we've been talking about. You know, we've been acting like we've been here for the last 10 years. But, you know, seriously, this is where we should expect to be. Um, and so, you know, it's just business as usual. Right. Or at least that's how we're carrying ourselves on the outside. Like I said, on the inside, it's the anxiety. Like, please, please show up against Baylor. Like, yeah. please, <laughs> please go out there and play hard against Baylor. But on the outside, you know, it's business as usual. If we, you know, win a Big 12 championship, maybe win a college football playoff right. game or something and then follow it up with years after that a success, then you can say, Texas is back, but you know, it's like we like Dion right now. We coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're not we not I'm back. Come up. Yeah. But 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 we coming. Right. Yeah. That's, so that's that's kind of what I was wondering is if you can even have that after a regular season game. I know that's where the, the famous term was was coined, um, was after that Notre Dame game. But uh can you even say like this is like this program is back where it needs to be after any regular season game. I mean, I feel like that's got to be some sort of championship playoff, something like that. I mean, maybe not this year, just because you've gone into the year saying that Texas is more talented, you know, than everybody they're going to face. Now, mm -hmm. I think next year, you know, let's say Georgia ends up three-peating this year, right? They come to DKR next season. I think if you beat Georgia, you know, if you end this season on a high note, have a really good season, and then beat Georgia at home next season, you know, in DKR, then you can say, oh, okay, maybe that could be the regular season win that would say, oh, okay, Texas is here for real, right? But outside of that, you know, it, and that would, like I said, that would take Georgia three-peating and just take a few the clear, things, yeah. you know, the clear, you know, top of the mountain program in college football for that even to mean something. Like I said, you know, this is a program with a ton of history and we've won at the highest level and we expect to do the things that we're doing now, you know, it took a while for us to get here, you know, since the last time yeah. we were doing it, yeah. but we expect the success that we have now and hopefully it continues. But 
you know, like I said, I'm going to act like I'm on the football team. We're taking it week by week at this point. Yes, sir. And and I think it was interesting. I meant to t- talk about it in that first segment there that the the anxiety, I think, is warranted when you think of the last time UT was 3-0. That was 2012. And I think that was 8-4 and four to end the regular season, maybe 7-5. and five. So it just feels like, you know, there, there's just so much more work to be done. So going off of that, you know, we, we've seen the, the numbers offensively aren't as kind to the Longhorns as the eyeball test has been. I think everyone will tell you, you know, Sark's in his bag. Quinn looks a lot better. And the numbers don't exactly say that, which I was a little surprised to see this week. And so that being said, you know, the defense has really stepped up, probably aren't getting as much flowers as as, as the, some of the other guys on the team. So is this can this defense win games for UT down the line here? Yeah, well, I definitely think this is a defensive-led football team, you know, which is crazy yeah. to say. You think Steve Sarkeesian, you think, you know, the high-flying offenses at, you know, USC and Alabama, um, and do you think Quinn Ewers and all the talent we have on the offensive side of the ball, and you're right, it has been a little underwhelming. You know, obviously they yeah. put on, you know, fireworks in Tuscaloosa, but, you know, this is a team that had one touchdown and three field goals in the first half against Rice. And then you come out and you're tied 10, 10, you know, and Quinn Ewers doesn't even have a hundred passing yards going into the fourth quarter against Wyoming. So, you know, like you said, you would expect a huge offensive explosion from this team, but it's really been the defense that's been the most consistent unit through three weeks of football. And they absolutely dominated Rice and Wyoming. And they kept, you know, what may be a good Bama offense down the road. They kept them pretty much in check as well. So, you know, I think that the defense for the better part of, you know, last year and, you know, the first three games has been the most consistent unit on this football team. We're not asking, you know, which defense is going to show up each week, you know, week in and week out. It seems like we're kind of asking that about Quinn Ewers and the offense at this point through three weeks. So I would say this is a defensive led football team. And if you asked me which unit I trusted more going into Baylor on Saturday, I would say it's this defense to shut down Sawyer Robertson. Yeah, honestly, I think this game could turn into a rock fight, uh, which would Absolutely. obviously favor Baylor. Uh, well, I mean, mentally anyway. Uh, but this Utah <laughs> game we had in week two, that that's exactly what it was. I mean, it was it looked like two quarterbacks at points, two quarterbacks who just didn't even know what a football looked like, man. Uh, it was not a high quality football game. It wasn't. I would have taken that if it was a win. And it wasn't that either. So could could we see a rock fight this weekend? I mean, you've seen more more Quinn and more of, of the Sark offense than, than we have. And you've seen, obviously, you talked about it earlier, a couple of the Baylor games this year. Could this end up being a rock fight in the end? Absolutely, I think so. You know, um, we've seen three different versions of Quinn Ewers this year, right? And so yeah. I don't think you have time to come in this game and, and try to see if Quinn has it, right? Or, you know, or or come out trying to win Quinn Ewers the Heisman. You know, I think both teams are going to come out and try to run the ball, uh, really control the clock and really control the tempo, you know, especially Baylor with, you know, those three running backs. I think you said one of them might be hurt. Uh, yep, Tom point. Richardson. Yeah, yeah. okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, but three running backs that – all have 22 carries and 113 yards. I got my notes right here. So yes. um, y'all spreading the ball really well. And and I think that, you know, the way that we established Jonathan Brooks in the fourth quarter against Wyoming, we're going to feed him. Cedric Baxter will be back. So, yeah, I think both quarterbacks will struggle a little bit. You know, Dave Aranda did a good job with Quinn Ewers last year. Obviously, he's grown mm-hmm. over the offseason. But I remember we had to run the ball 22 straight times to win that game. So, yeah. you know, um, I, I definitely <laughs> think that yeah, – exactly, right? But – you would hope with your five-star quarterback, you could let him spin it a little bit. So, uh, you know, I think that both teams are going to try to lean on the run. Both teams are going to try to shorten the game. And, and I think both teams are going to try to get out of there with a, a ugly, hard-fought win. So I want to ask you, you know, because Baylor is, is so famous for that offense and, and the wide zone and the way you use those running backs. Do you think with Sawyer Robertson being a young, inexperienced quarterback who's turnover prone at this point yeah. that the running backs can carry Baylor to victory on Saturday? And I'm not asking you to predict the yeah. game just yet, but do you think the running backs are capable of carrying them to victory? We'll get your prediction in the next segment. You know, I, I, I'm i trying to find some positives here, man. I, I don't think so. I don't, I don't think so. If they had uh, Richard Reese and Dominic Richardson, I think you could make the case that that they could do that, and that's obviously the style that they'd like to play. Uh, I think a bigger thing is that there's just been a disconnect Um 
in the offensive line. And they played a lot better against Long Island, so take it with a grain of salt, but they played a lot better than they had the first two games where they were just terrible and they couldn't get on the same page. And it looked a lot better last week. So, you know, I, I'm kind of just hopeful that there's a Jeff Grimes game plan in there that works and and we win the line of scrimmage because that's something Bayward hasn't done very well over the last 12 months or so uh, or 10 months or so, I should say, towards the end of last season and coming into this year um, and something that I think UT will have a huge advantage in. So do I think the running backs can win the game by themselves? No, I'm hoping there is enough scheme there on the offensive side of the ball that they can get get to 20 plus points because that's been uh, that was a struggle for them in Sawyer's first game uh, against Utah. And then last week they, they get to 30 in the end, but it's against Long Island. They don't have a great first half. So if they can get to like 24 points, I actually weirdly feel good uh, because I think this defense is heading in the right direction. All right. And a quick word from our sponsors. And then we're going to give you the moment you've all been waiting for me and Cameron predict the game, the battle of I-35 on Saturday. Today's episode, this crossover brought to you by the Locked On Podcast Network is brought to you by Jace Medical. Everyone should be empowered to care for themselves and their loved ones during the unexpected. That's why Jace Medical offers the Jace case. The Jace case provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use and gives you a peace of mind so that you are not just hoping that you have access to medication in an emergency. Jace Medical makes sure that you have the medication in hand. It's simple. They handle everything from the online evaluation to licensed pharmacy, medication delivery, and ongoing consultation and care. Don't get caught unprepared. Save more than $360 by getting these life-saving antibiotics with Jace Medical, plus an additional $20 off by using code Locked On at checkout. JaceMedical.com, J-A-S-E Medical.com. Promo code locked on. All right, Cam. So based on your statements over the past 21 minutes, I don't believe that you have a ton of faith <laughs> in this Baylor team. I'm going to get your prediction a little bit later, but I just want to ask you, right? If I fell asleep tonight, went into a coma and woke up at the end of the season and I looked at the ESPN app and I saw that Baylor beat Texas on what would it be September 23rd, mm. what happened for Baylor to win that game? Oof. Heat, Oof. that's a fire question. It, that's a fire question. And the toughest part is that the Longhorns would take a bus up there because I would have said plane crash would do it. Um, <laughs> but honestly, uh, no, I think what would happen would be, uh, and, and I think, you know, I agree with you in that the defense is clearly more steady for UT right now, but I think it would take... Quinn Ewers having just a bad, bad game. And, and what I mean by that is, is giving us a few in the first half. I, I said that earlier in the week, kind of, and I still say it op optimistically more than anything, not realistically, but if Baylor can force a couple of turnovers in the first half, I think that goes just a really long, I, it goes a long way for anyone, but even more so for a team that's lacking in confidence that needs a little juice in the stadium uh, that will do it. Obviously being in a night game and, and a sold out crowd, um, even if there's a ton of burnt orange in there, it'll do wonders by uh, getting, you know, an interception or a fumble early or, you know, blocking a kick or something like that, because I think Baylor is also going to need short fields to get in the end zone. And so if, if Baylor were to pull this off, I think it's just going to take a, a real below average day um, from Quinn Ewers and, and a huge improvement from the Baylor offensive line, even from the improvement they had last week. So it's possible, man. That's that's why we rolled out the footballs. That's that's why we play the game. Uh, that's that's why they're going to play it on Saturday. So I think that's that's what it will take. A lot a, a lot of mistakes uh, and more, you know, a, a, a half of Texas beating themselves more so than than Baylor really taking it to them. A half, anyway. All right. Yeah, I think the keys yeah. for, for Texas to win on Saturday is I think you have to be efficient, you know, and methodical on offense. I think you want to get the run game going early, uh, get Jonathan Brooks and Cedric Baxter really running the rock. And I think you want to let uh, Quinn Ewers take his opportunities off of that. Right. I think Baylor's going to force Quinn Ewers mm -hmm. to be methodical and really drive down the field, see if Quinn Ewers and Sark can be patient. Right. We know they want to take the deep shots. We know they're a quick strike offense. But can Quinn Ewers orchestrate an eight to ten play drive? Can Sark 
Steve Sarkeesian stay patient and orchestrate an eight to 10 play drive and take what the defense gives them. We'll see if they can do that and if they can stay uh, turnover free on Saturday. I think that's the key for the offense. Run the ball and allow Quinn Ewers to take you know shots off of play action and RPOs. Do not turn it into the Quinn Ewers show on Saturday. And I think yeah. on defense, you know, you have to kind of follow the game plan you against, you had against Alabama. You know, you want to stop the run. You don't want to let that wide zone get going. And you want to make Sawyer Robertson beat you, just like you went into Tuscaloosa and tried to make Jalen Milrow beat you. He couldn't. I don't think Sawyer Robertson can beat this Texas defense on Saturday. And so, like I said, you're going to make sure that you stop that run. And you want to have to make sure you want to make Sawyer Robertson have to play hero ball and hopefully, if he does that, it's not enough to beat Texas on Saturday. So I'm asking you now, Cameron, two million dollar questions for the Here fans at home. Here we go. Texas is favored by 14 and a half points. Who wins? Who covers? I think Baylor covers. I think Texas wins. I I wouldn't be surprised to see this as again, kind of a rock fight, kind of a slug fest. My prediction which has changed. It's gotten the, – the deficit has gotten smaller during the week, Jonathan. Okay, so I'm picking Texas still, and I hate to do that in this last time. Probably the only time we'll do a football crossover, which is – Your fans can hear you. Pick Your fans I can know, hear you. I know, and I picked them. Look, by, by Friday's show, I will have changed my mind completely and have gone all in. Um, I, I would not be surprised to see Baylor put up a really good fight in this game and Texas winning – 23 17 yeah so it's much closer yeah i think texas wins i think baylor covers as well 14 and a half is a ton of points on the road especially for a team that has not been consistent offensively in two of the three games they've played uh i think that sark will get the running game going and i think you know quinn ewers will have some easy completions uh to players like you know xavier worthy and ad mitchell who can make you know a ton of plays after the catch right you know just get the ball into their hands and let them make plays and like I said, I just don't think Sawyer Robertson, based on what I've seen on the tape, you know, can beat this yeah, Texas man. defense yeah. for 60 minutes. So I got 30 to 20. You know, like I said, I think it's going to be a lot of running the ball and, you know, getting the ball out of Queen Ewers' hands quick and letting the playmakers make plays like they did against Wyoming at the end of the game. 30 to 20, Texas wins. Baylor covers. Any final thoughts, Cameron? Yeah, I mean, yeah, here? man. Get to FanDuel <laughs> and bet Baylor to cover. I mean, that's all I got to say. Baylor to cover. And I'm telling you, by Friday's show, I am I will almost certainly be picking a Baylor upset or like a last-second UT field goal. I'm just going to talk myself into it. Yeah, and by Friday's show, I might tell you that Texas covers instead of <laughs> Baylor. Thank you for tuning in to this Locked, Over Cro- Locked On. Oh, my gosh. Locked On crossover episode. Jonathan Davis, Locked On Longhorns. Cameron Stewart, Locked On Baylor, Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day is...